I'm glad you're in my kitchen with me. My name is Diane Rogers and I want to show you some really easy summer vegetable recipes. Everything's starting to come in season right now at our local farm market and I'm in at the Toledo Farmers Market. All my farmer buddies are there and there's just so much even though they're Southern Ohio tomatoes they're wonderful. We've got sweet corn. We just have so much. But here's some here's some real easy stuff I want to show you. A big it'll be a family dish that the entire family should like and very versatile. You use whatever you've got. Now, I've got a couple eggplant that I bought from some farmer friends out in Thurman's in Grand Rapids, Ohio. So what I'm going to do with this is make two dishes. One, the baked vegetables, and I want to make myself a little baba ganoush. It's such a great snack and it holds well in the refrigerator and it's easy. So I am going to take the eggplant and I think I will use I'm going to use the larger one for the baba ganache but now let's do the rest of the vegetables I have a little baked pan that I'm going to use I have some peeled tomatoes from the video I just made on how to easily peel and core them and then I want to show you these zucchini I'm growing them they're kind of hard to find you can find them in a lot of ethnic markets. It's a Italian zucchini called Romanesco. It's absolutely wonderful. It's very ribbed and it's striped. And by looking at it, you would think that this is a very tough zucchini, but oh my God, it's wonderful. It's sturdy, it holds up well. The skin is not tough. It's got a great flavor to it. So it's worth seeking out or grow your own. Try. I got mine growitalian.com. Anyway, so what we're going to do with these is I'm going to trim off the ends and I'm going to cut these in slices, just like quarter inch slices. I could do them, whoops, I could do this on the long, but I find that when you're making a casserole like this, it's sometimes harder to cut in nice pieces you know, when you're trying to cut like 12 pieces out of it, it's sometimes easier to use rounds for this type of a situation. Because if you don't have a really sharp knife, it makes it a little challenging to go through. But aren't these cute? Whoops. Aren't these cute? You can see how ribbed it is after you cut it. Now, another nice thing that I really like about these zucchini is it doesn't have, even though it got a little large, because Oh my God, unless you've got great eyes, you need to get them, nip them in the bud, you know, nip them when they're a small size, but the seeds aren't really big. So if you miss and you're growing them, you know, you won't end up with real pithy type zucchini as a lot of them do get when they get older. Since I want this eggplant to cook just ever so slightly, I'm going to cut off the ends. And then I'm gonna cut these in about quarter inch rounds. Won't take long to cook. What I'm going to do is put these in a 400 oven. You could put them on the grill. Use grilled eggplant too. You could put them in a saute pan, but I think the oven's a lot easier because it's faster, doesn't make quite as much mess, and you can walk away from it and do something else as these are cooking. So what you do to put them on the sheet tray. Now eggplant act like sponges, guaranteed. So since they act like sponges, what I'm going to do to use sort of as minimal as possible oil is coat the bottom of a sheet tray, spread. I use extra virgin olive oil because I really want the flavor. And then we're going to lay the eggplant out on the sheet tray, then I'm going to take the oil and drizzle a little bit of on top and while I'm getting everything else ready this will go to the 400 oven. These probably won't take more than 10 minutes just to soften them slightly. In telling my sister that I was going to make a video on how to, how to a lot of stuff, she said show us how to cut an onion. So I thought oh that's a good one too. Um, this is a candy onion that I got out at my local farm stand. It's uh, uh, grown around these parts. 
It's the equivalent, believe it or not, to a Vidalia. Vidalia onion is a Vidalia onion. It's grown in Vidalia, Georgia. It's all about the clay. But for our parts in Northwest Ohio, these candy onions are excellent. So what you want to do to clean this the easiest is a small, blunt, short paring knife. Stick the point in to the root end and then turn the onion with your thumb over the root, turn the onion around the knife and voila, it's out. How's that for easy? And I do the same thing on what's the leaf end, stick the knife in, maybe a quarter inch away, half inch, something like that, and turn the onion around the top end of the onion. Then the easiest way that I find to slice these up is cut this in half, take the outer skins off. Now that this is on its flat side, this makes it real easy to cut. So with my fingers curled so you don't chop them off, <clears throat> and with thumb of knife on one side of the blade and forefinger on the other so you have control over the knife, you're going to take this knife and just slice this onion. Nice brick. You want to make sure you have sharp knives. If you're in the Toledo, Ohio area, I hear that the knife sharpening guy is down at the Toledo Farmer's Market on Sunday. He's one you want to go see because without sharp knives, it makes all the tasks just a little more challenging. So there we have some onion ready to go. I already have some shredded cheese. And I'm going to mix that with some Romano and some uh, fresh whole milk mozzarella. Now let's talk about the garlic. I got this, the garlic scape video that I put up a couple weeks ago. Well now that the garlic scapes are off, the garlic has been pulled and it's been dried. You can tell USA or non-imported um, garlic by the roots. You will always have roots with garlic that is either grown in the USA or locally. When it's imported, these roots are, I'll show you what it looks like, oh, a little hard, very hard, which it should be. Oh. The roots have to be cleaned off. A lot of the garlic's coming from China, so you might want to ditch that, but they have to clean up the bottom of it. Anyway, you might want to keep an eye on that. Now I'm going to just give it a quick whack and we'll take the paper skin off of it. And now it will be ready to go for, with my garlic press. I could chop this, but I think I'm going to use the garlic press because it's fast, easy. I won't be trashing the cutting board and it works really well. Now, for the distribution part, here's some tomato juice, shall I say, a puree that the last batch of tomato pies, this actually started out as a half gallon of juice, and I put it in a pot after I got done with the pies, and then I put it on the stove and reduced it to this. You never want to throw that out because it's going to have a great use that I'm going to show you. This will make distributing the fresh garlic over the vegetables much easier. Then we're going to stir this up. So when we pour this over the vegetables, this will melt right into and evenly distribute all that garlic instead of getting a whole big clump. So there we have that ready to go. Now what I want to do is cut some of these tomatoes that we peeled in the last video and I'm going to give these oh it's probably what kind of a cut of this it's probably a quarter inch cut this is a situation that you don't want to use the skins you definitely want just the tomato no skins because the skins are going to end up falling off and then they get really tough and you just don't want to do that much better to peel them from the basil that I picked earlier and put in a little glass of water to keep it fresh. I'm picking just the leaves off. 
you want to make sure that you don't put any stem in this because the stem is where it becomes bitter. A lot of people always ask me why my pesto is so good. Well, when I took a look at how some people make pesto, they're not as careful about taking out all the stem. And if you leave that stem in there, I guarantee it's gonna be quite bitter. So just take the leaves. Now what I'm gonna do with this, I'm not making pesto obviously, I want it for flavoring. So I'm taking the outer leaves that are quite large, putting the smaller leaves inside the outer leaves, stacking them up so that I can get what they call a chiffonade out of this. What we're doing is we're cutting a nice fine strip. Now you can look away, you can do whatever you want when you're cutting this, so long as when you're cutting, your fingers are curled and your knife is on the board using the tip of your knuckle as a guide, but your fingers are curled under so you don't chop them off. Hurts. Anyway, now we have some basil that's gonna go to this little casserole, a one pot vegetarian wonder. The vegetables that you use in this are really versatile. Just go to the farmer's market, come home with whatever you've got. I have some fresh mozzarella over here and some Pecorino Romano in my little mooly grater ready to go and then the tomato puree, but I could just be using the sliced tomato, that'll work fine, but you don't want to waste anything. And then the zucchini's ready to go, and the eggplant is about ready to come out of the oven. While I'm waiting just the last couple of minutes to get that out, I want to prep the pan. Now one thing you want to do, prep the pan, you're, you're going to put a little olive oil on the bottom, rub it in the bottom and on the sides so you don't have a mess that's a pain in the neck to clean up. This will make cleanup much easier. You can see that that didn't take long. By the time I got this prepped, the eggplant's done. And when you put your finger on it, it's nice and soft. So that is ready to go. Now what we're going to do is start layering this. And what I'm gonna do, I'm going to put a layer shingled like, and I'll show you when I get it in here, of the zucchini on the bottom because that will take the longest to cook because it's so firm. So by putting it on the bottom, it's gonna get the bottom heat, which will help facilitate the cooking and make it nice and tender when it comes out. So I have that just slightly overlapping in the bottom. Now I'm going to put the a layer of tomato. Dirt grown tomatoes are so much better than hothouse tomatoes. It's night and day. Anything that's grown in the field, it picks up the flavor of wherever it's grown. You know, if you can find somebody not using chemicals, and it doesn't necessarily, have to, they don't necessarily have to be certified, because I know quite a few who don't want to go through the certification process and expense, it's pretty expensive. Um, rather, they would just grow without chemicals like, you know, their parents did. Anyway, so now I have a layer of these wonderful field-grown tomatoes. And I'm going to season this slightly as we go. I have a little bit of salt. Since I'm using Picorino, I went easy on the salt. But I'm going to add some fresh cracked pepper. Now I must say that if you don't have any fresh basil that we're adding now, you can use dried basil, you could use oregano, but while the season's in, try and get yourself some fresh, fresh anything. Basil and tomato seems to go together really well. And if you're at the Toledo Farmer's Market, I saw somebody last week with the most beautiful plants. They were about that size pot, probably 12 inch pot, I think, I could be wrong. Something like, I don't know, eight bucks or something. But there were quite a few plants, so it's pretty inexpensive pesto if you can transplant it to something larger, so it grows larger. Anyway, so we've got the zucchini, the tomato. Now, a little bit of 
eggplant. Oh, how perfect is that? Now I think what I want to do, because the eggplant is on here, is spoon a little of this tomato and the juice over it. I don't want the eggplant to dry. I want this to stay moist. So all that garlic, I want to make sure that it's mixed in well. And we'll take that, spread it around a little bit. Then we're going to put now the end of the zucchini on top of this and the moisture from the tomato will help cook these. And if you don't layer it exactly like this, whatever. You can layer cheese in throughout the layers too. I'm just going to put a little bit on the top. I forgot the onions. These wonderful candy onions. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to put a layer of the onion on top. This will get a lot of top heat so these will be really well. These will cook really well too. A little bit, just a few vegetables sure does make a decent sized casserole. Instead of salt on this layer, because I have the picorino, I'm going to use that as the salt. Picorino is kind of salty. Sheep smoked cheese, it's really good. Boy. So there's that. Now I will do some fresh pepper. And for flavor purposes, a little drizzle of olive oil. I'm going to drizzle this with the rest of this sauce. Now if you didn't happen to have this tomato sauce, the tomatoes will be just fine on their own. Okay, now I will layer this with the final layer of tomato. We'll layer some. I'm going to use a combination of already grated mozzarella and I'm going to use up the end of this fresh mozzarella I have. Now to take a little bit more picorino over the top. That's going to act as a buffer from the mozzarella sticking from the foil after I cover this up. I want to bake this covered so that the steam helps bake it as well by keeping where the foil is going to help keep the heat in. I put a little bit of olive oil on it and spread that over the top with my hands and then we're going to take it boiled side down, crease the corner, bring it in nice and tight on all four corners so you have a nice tight seal on that. This is going to go into a 375-400 oven. It's pretty flexible until it is knife tender. Look at these wonderful vegetables out of the oven. Don't they look great? Now you will find that with the combination of the zucchini and the tomatoes and the little bit of tomato sauce that I used, you're going to get a lot of liquid from the vegetables as they bake and especially baking them covered. They're fork tender and I personally like the extra juice in these baked vegetables. To eliminate some of the juice you could layer it up with some uh, pasta like some flat lasagna noodles or lay it up with uh, layer it with fettuccine something like that. You could layer it up with rice too that would be excellent. And you can add different layers of cheese, like a cream cheese mix, a cream cheese with extra sharp white cheddar, or add some Parmesan and cream cheese, or Gruyere. There's so many varieties on this, but it's really an inexpensive, great way to use up the summer vegetables when they're in abundance. Pretty soon peppers will be coming on pretty strong, and roasted, I like to do those fire roasted, but roasted peppers layered up in this is really good too. And you could just leave out the cheese, in which case then you have vegan dishes. Anyway, this is a great one pot wonder for the whole family, easy to do. And the best part is it keeps for a couple weeks in the refrigerator if you keep it cold. So I do hope you like this video, like and share it with your friends, and please visit for more videos. And thanks for watching. See you again soon.